Hi, I'm Laura Staples here with virtualsheetmusic.com and in this video we're going to talk about the G-string and some of the special treatment that is needed to sound good on this string. And when I tell my students about the G-string, three things come to mind. The first thing is the thickness of the string. The second thing is <clears throat> the straightness of the bow, and the third thing is the height of the arm or the elbow in space. Okay, so let's talk about number one, the thickness of the string. Now, a lot of people think the G string is the thickest, but technically the D string is a little bit thicker, but that's okay. You can think of both of these strings as our thick strings. The difference is that the G string is a much lower register. It's a fifth lower than the D. And so it takes even more coaxing to get those notes out. And the good thing about the G is that we've got this C bout here. So we don't have to worry so much about snagging other strings. Whereas with the D string, ugh, if you go too far this way, you hit the G. If you go too far this way, you hit the A. That's one of the special considerations you have to keep in mind for the D string. But this video isn't about the D string. So with the G, the thickness of the string requires that you find a different sweet spot. And by sweet spot, I mean sounding point. Of course, we have different sounding points for different effects on all of our strings, but there's a sweet spot on every string that you want to kind of stay in for just normal, average passages of music. And the sweet spot on the G string is going to be a little further from the bridge than it is on the A and the E string. Okay, so the A string, I like to sit pretty close to the bridge because it gives me a nice, direct, penetrating sound and a clear sound and a fast response with my fingers. Now for special effects, I'll go further out for softer passages and whatnot. The G string, the sweet spot is definitely not in the same place. It's a little further from the bridge. That is where I like to be on the G string most of the time. Okay, so the A string is more right around there. G string is about a whole width of the horsehair further from the bridge. Okay, and D string is kind of in between the difference of the G to the A. All right, so that's how I deal with the different thickness of the string, of the G string, and the fact that it's in our bass register. So it takes more coaxing. So just keep that in mind. It's got a special sweet spot. Now the second consideration for playing on the G string, what did I say it was? Ah, straightness of bow. It's the geometry on the G string is way more severe to draw a straight bow on the G string than it is on any of the other strings. Just try it for yourself. Put your bow at the tip on the A or on the E and look in a mirror and make sure your bow is straight and it's not that hard. But then move to the D string. Ooh, it's a little harder. You have to reach your arm out a little further and the G string, you're way, way out there and you have to stretch your arm out, clear out in front of you. Okay, so the tendency is, as we go from the E string, doing whole bows, to the A string, to the D string, we tend to go a little more crooked and then our bow starts slipping clear over the fingerboard. So it's all about, first of all, keeping your bow glued to the sweet spot, and second of all, 
Remember, the geometry is just a lot more work on the G string. Every down bow, you should be aware of keeping your bow on the sweet spot and moving your arm out front, not off to the side. Okay, so that's item number two to be aware of. Item number three is fairly straightforward. When you're on the E string, your elbow's here, A string, your elbow's here, D string, and G string, your elbow is the highest. With a little bit of flexibility in there, but the general rule is we lift our arm up the highest for the G string. Now, for long, long passages on the G string, I like to bring my violin a little bit closer to my arm so that my arm isn't always working so hard. That's just me. That's just one little idea of how you can save your muscles some exhaustion. Okay, now, incidentally, the book Violin Basics that is available on virtualsheetmusic.com teaches violin, it, it approaches violin from the G string. That's the first string you learn is the G string and it talks about on page 30 it talks about the reason for this and basically it's to get the hardest string out of the way first and once you learn how to make a good sound on the G string the rest of the strings are just so easy and straightforward so um, that's a good resource to seek out to learn the special treatment of each of the strings also in the library of virtual sheet music, the music that you can just download whenever you want to, is of course some scales and one of my favorite all-time pieces, the Bach Air in G. It's the air for the G string, that's not what they called it back then, but um, that passage, that whole piece is done entirely on the G string. And if you're a more advanced player, that's a really good etude to develop your tone and your shifting and your control of your bow on the G string. So maybe look, look up that piece. It's the piece that was playing at the beginning of this video. And I hope this video at least helps you get started with mastering the G string. Check out Violin Basics by Fabrizio Ferrari on this website. I'm sure you'll find it helpful. It has beautiful photographs of how to handle the G-string. And that's it for this video. Post your questions, your comments, your suggestions, and I'll answer them personally. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.